Welcome to the Absolute Scale tutorial video. In this quick video, we'll review the differences between Absolute Scale versus the 8th wall default responsive scale and best scenarios to use each. Then we'll go over important project components and how to use these. Absolute Scale refers to the real world size of an object. In the case of this diagram or our example project, this means the virtual car will look and fit in the world as an actual physical car would meaning these dimensions will line up with the actual physical car model. Some great scenarios for this type of experience would be for users when viewing or sizing furniture in their house, taking a look at a car in their driveway, or seeing how a new coffee machine looks in their kitchen. Responsive scale refers to the fact that your experience will always open in relative size. Furthermore, the scale of the scene is determined by the initial height or Y value of the camera in the scene. Lower camera heights result in larger content. Higher camera heights scale the content smaller. The initial height of the camera translates to the distance to the surface. Taking a look at our diagram here, let's say you open up the experience with an initial camera distance from the desk. That may be quite small. The virtual car will open up with the same screen real estate as if you opened it up via the ground. However, since your initial height from the detected surface is smaller, it will appear smaller, and so forth with the car on the ground or other surfaces. So it's relative. This can be opened on a desk, it can be opened on the top of a building, it can be opened on a train, so that experience can be viewed in many different environments. Now let's take a look at the Absolute Scale example project, which is using A-Frame as a 3D framework. If we go into our body.html file, under a scene, we can see XR web. This is where we've added scale absolute. We add the scale absolute parameter to our XR web component in a scene, which ensures that the project utilizes absolute scale instead of the default responsive scale. You can see in our documentation in a frame XR web attributes, the scale component here. Its default is responsive, but we've changed it to absolute. There are many other attributes as well that you can customize. We've also added a coaching overlay. Now, once we've set the absolute, it will dynamically set the virtual camera height to the actual height of the device camera. To estimate scale, the 8th wall engine needs data to determine the height of the camera. This requires users to move their device to generate data for determining scale. To guide your user through this flow, we have created a new pipeline module called Coaching Overlay, which can easily be added to your project, as I specified before. Now, on the video on the right here, you can see we have the Coaching Overlay. I'll play the video to showcase. So once the user has moved their phone back and forth and we've received enough data, the 3D model is initially placed into the scene. Now, once you've added the coaching overlay under a scene, you'll also need to make sure you have it in your head.html file. You can see here, we have the meta tag, which is specifying the coaching overlay. So in your projects, if you're adding the coaching overlay in absolute scale, please make sure in head.html you have that specified along within your a scene on, in your body.html file. Next, let's take a look in our JavaScript folder. Here we have a couple files we have our components JavaScript file, which has a logic for a lot of the uh, parts of our experience. We'll go into that in, in depth later. Next, we have the QMap real time, which is helps create hyper-realistic reflections to your 3D models. Um, this really helps with cars and, and gives that realism. The QMap static is a similar uh, logic, but instead of using the camera as a texture, it's using a static QMap image. Next, we have the responsive immersive script, which we'll go into depth more so later as well. But in here, you'll have some logic that will um, essentially have different behaviors for each device. So the experience will run differently per devices. If it's a 3D desktop experience, a mobile AR experience, um, a VR headset experience, uh, this is where you would put that logic. And then finally, we have XRJS. So this is a kind of a light estimation uh, logic. So let's go into our components.js file and I'll 
briefly go over the components within this uh, folder. So first we have the change color component. And what this is doing is this creates a button carousel that changes the color of the car when clicked. It also supports animated custom textures. So you can see in our screenshot here, we have white, blue, orange, uh, light blue, and then you'll see we have a, a video texture here as well. Our next component is the annotation component. And this helps generate labels and handles proximity behavior uh, between hotspots along with the uh, text uh, above the car that relates with the scale of it. So I'll play this quick video to kind of initiate that. So what's cool about this, this is using CSS2, which uh, helps give a really clear text uh, within these experiences. And you can see these orange hotspots here. So with proximity, the uh, hotspots will change and, and show text. Um, depending on how close the user is to that specific hotspot. Next, I'll go into the proximity component, which again uh, relates to the uh, proximity, except not the hotspot specifically, but instead here it's going to be the windows opening. Um, we'll see as the user comes closer, uh, proximity to the car, the window animations will go down and then they can continue uh, viewing the 3D model. Next, we have the absolute pinch scale component. And this component um, essentially has, helps with the behavior of, of scaling the 3D model. It is initially uh, placed into the scene at a very small scale, and then it's um, scaled to 111, which is its absolute scale. And this uh, allows you to scale uh, the model around the scene. Next, we have our GLTF morph target uh, component. And so this, uh, combined with the proximity components, uh, has the logic for the windows going up and down as the user gets closer or further away from the 3D model. And then we export all these components and we call them in our app.js file here and register them and then bring them into our async. So, I would like to also touch on our responsive immersive JavaScript file here. Um, I did touch on how the model is initially in the scene, and then we scale it to its absolute scale. So, I'd like to bring your attention to 63 in the responsive immersive script, where we're adding a listener to XR tracking status, which is an A-frame event. And once this is fired, we are essentially taking the car object 3D, um, and in your case, it may be a different model. And so the model is essentially within the scene at a very small scale, and then once this uh, event goes off, we scale that up to 111. So you'll want to make sure that your 3D model is scaled correctly in your 3D software, and then when you import it, into eighth wall, um, and once you've set absolute scale, we will scale that with this logic.